Chapter 1. Understanding the Borderline Mother How to Understand Someone Who Does Not Understand Himself? Understanding a mother suffering from borderline personality disorder is not easy. There are people who, in many cases, are unaware of their problem. They're high-risk, always conflict-ready, and difficult to reach. The usage of the term borderline personality disorder, BPD, started in the 1930s, and the name was symbolically coined by Adolf Stern as the disorder is on the border between psychosis and neurosis. Towards the end of the 17th century, English physician Thomas Sydenham wrote a frequently quoted sentence about a number of his patients in a letter. They love the same ones beyond measure, but they also hate them for no reason. He described their sudden outbursts of anger, pain, and fear. Of course, the disorder that Sydenham described was not called borderline personality disorder. He chose the term hysterical for women and hypochondriac for men, but his description was a good prediction. Even today, the symptoms he cited are the two most important symptoms when making a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. So this condition is not new. Symptoms have been reported earlier, but only in the last few decades have they become more significant. The very first occurrence of this condition is characterized as hysteria. Then, you can imagine how serious this condition is. The severity of this condition is so big that it requires deep analysis. The psychoanalytic interpretation of the dynamics and emergence of the problem in question is that of people who are stuck in development between the ages of 18 and 36. So it's about very early formative years. The borderline condition is characterized by unsuccessful separation from the mother, which developmentally would normally occur at an early period. Failure to separate is often because the mother, probably from her problems, did not respond positively to the child's attempts to become independent, to experiment with the world, and the mother tends to be dismissive, depressed, or even angry when the child began, naturally and developmentally normal, to separate from her and try to get to know his wider environment. The child is quite dependent on the mother in those early days and needs his mother's support and love for future normal development. If he does not get what he needs, he'll not be able to adequately resolve the separation and independence phase. As a result, the child will not develop into a mature personality, but will always use some of the primitive defense mechanisms, will not perceive other people as whole, because he or she will not be developmentally rounded, and will slip between the idealization and the impairment of other important persons from his or her environment. In the borderline state, we always encounter the following triad, aggression, depression, and a vague identity. An inner void can have at least two meanings, which are by no means contradictory. It can refer to the physical and the psychic. In the first sense, a person can be empty when, for example, they're hungry. In the second sense, emptiness refers to affect, feeling, or absence of feeling. Emptiness, in the psychic sense, is a term that confuses many. For those who feel it, and the experts who deal with it, the very word emptiness indicates the absence of something. Since it is a shortcoming, it's difficult to give a precise definition of what exactly is missing. We can say that early traumatic experiences and genetics are major factors in the development of borderline personality disorder. All those suffering from this condition say they are void. It's a void they can't even describe to themselves. The main problem is that they're trying to bridge that gap through aggression, possessiveness, or self-destruction. This is a very big problem, and it is given the greatest importance by the fact that people suffering from this condition may be mothers. The main problems are the instability of self-understanding, interpersonal relationships, and mood swings. A characteristic pattern is a behavior characterized by instability of interpersonal relationships, self-experience, emotions, and control of emotions, which can be identified as a pattern in early adulthood. 
If the mother cannot understand herself, how can she understand the child? A mother with this condition is in a terrible break. She is both an aggressor and a victim. The aggressor is because this condition leads to terrible behavior and a lack of empathy towards the child. Then, in all ways, because of her condition, she terrorizes all the people around her, and the biggest culprit is the child. That's because the child is best suited to serve as a valve. On the other hand, the mother is also a victim, because when aggression, panic, or other behaviors pass, she suffers because she knows she has hurt the child. She suffers deeply and sincerely because she is aware that in the onset of anger, she hurt the innocent child she loves. Then, in every way, she tries to make up for that outburst towards the child, so she acts protectively, and she's then full of love for the child. This lasts until the next attack caused by the condition, so the terrible cycle repeats. This leaves the child very confused and sad, because he does not know or understand how the mother who loves him now hates him again. Of course, in this sad story, the child is the biggest victim. But we have to be objective. In most cases, the victim is also the mother who suffers because she injures the child and cannot control herself and stop at the moment. Although this condition is followed by unstable emotions, prone to experiencing strong euphoria and intense disappointment, borderline individuals are, in fact, mostly dystopian. Dystopia is a chronic, non-psychotic depressive disorder that lasts for at least two years and is characterized by a depressed mood and overall loss of life satisfaction. Therapies of people with these problems are, for the most part, long and difficult. The basic thing that a therapist should offer to a borderline person are empathy, compassion, acceptance, as well as in showing that he or she will be there, stay with the client, will not leave him or impair him, and will be able to tolerate his sudden mood swings, anger, and often hatred and other self-destructive manifestations. Therefore, both the therapist and the client must endure the therapy. The shift is slow, but if a person is determined to accept help, they will, step by step, build up broken parts of their personality and reorganize early traumatic experiences. Borderline, be it a personality disorder, an adaptation, or simply the condition, is consistently inconsistent and stable in its instability. BPD person lacks insight and the ability to see reality as it is. As such, he needs the help of another compassionate being to overcome difficulties and strike a balance in the chaotic world. It's important to recognize this problem and help your mother on time, because the consequences are dreadful unless both mother and child are helped on time. One of the best characteristics of borderline personality disorder is emotional deregulation. Mothers with this disorder experience major mood swings accompanied by intense and sudden anger, often directed at their loved ones. In some cases, they have a personality that is high risk for conflict. This means that they have recurring patterns of behavior where they focus their anger on specific duty offenders, which prolongs or escalates conflicts. If a child is a target, he must know what this is all about. This is a major mental health problem that affects the relationships of millions of people every day. The main problem regarding borderline personality disorder is related to living with a person who suffers from borderline personality disorder, especially when that someone is a person you depend on, your mother. Causes of personality disorders are almost always associated with genetic predispositions when combined with the environment during childhood. The biopsychosocial approach to discovering the causes of personality disorders, i.e., the correlation of an individual's genetic, social, and psychological background, is increasingly emphasized. Early childhood experiences have been shown to play almost the most important role in the development of the disorder. Excessive criticism, lack of attention, neglect, physical or psychological abuse, 
and many other childhood circumstances can be the trigger for a personality disorder that is already present in a person's genetic background. Often, different combinations of personality disorders also occur, so borderline personality disorder often occurs in combination with affective bipolar disorder. The one with the most consequences when it comes to borderline personality disorder is certainly when the mother suffers from this disorder. This condition leaves devastating consequences on the children, and if it's not properly recognized and treated, it will most likely develop the same condition on the child, or it will ruin the child's self-confidence for life. Continuous entanglement in chaotic interpersonal relationships is one of the most recognizable features of borderline personality disorder when it comes to mother. In chronic avoidance of loneliness, these individuals often engage in dysfunctional relationships despite intense feelings of victimization from partners. So, we know what it's like to live a life with the mother who suffers from this condition. She's constantly on edge. She loves and hates her child at the same time. If the relationship between mother and the child is happening in the classic nuclear family, the child will often be forced to watch the constant verbal and sometimes not just verbal argument with the father. The child will often feel helpless and afraid in the early childhood, but in the later years, this will encourage rebellion within the child, or things can go differently. The child will become lonely and associative, unable to trust no one, and if the things escalate, depending on the pressure in the early childhood, that child will evolve ideas that life is worthless, and the idea of taking his own life and intensive thinning about suicide will occur. Yes, the pain is enormous and pressure is great, but you must understand that this is not your fault. You must see the problem with open eyes and be able to see the wither picture. Your mother may have scared you for life, but you still love her? Probably you do, because you must understand that she did not ask for this. No one wants to be mentally ill. But the damage is done already, and you must go on. The same thing will happen if the child is raised by a single mother who suffers from this condition, with the difference that mother may have numerous sexual partners, and that can cause a whole new wave of traumas. A mother is the beginning of everything. She can't be good or bad a priori. She's just a mother. Even if she psychologically, unconsciously harmed her child, it's only a consequence of her poor childhood or poor relationship with her parents. A mother, who often left the child with relatives, gave it too early to kindergarten, or mainly needed more space for herself, career, or hobby, can influence the child by looking at it in black and white. In, in adulthood, that child will go to extremes and stereotypes concerning the opposite sex. First, they will love to madness. Then, they will hate fiercely. With such stereotypical thinking, it is impossible to build a healthy relationship. In families where the child has been a judge in a quarrel between the mother and father, later, he will feel disrespect for himself. For him, the life of others will become more important than his. Children of single mothers who have seen and know how difficult it is cannot build their family because of feelings of guilt in front of their parents. Girls often have inappropriate relationships with men, and young men who are sensitive to women's suffering choose a woman who pities them and then suffer a lifetime of lack of love. If the mother cares for the child, both physically and emotionally, the child will surely grow into a healthy person. Otherwise, they'll not respect themselves. They'll always place themselves in second or third place concerning others. The influence of the mother on the mental development of the child is one of the most significant and perhaps the most exploited topics in psychology. But this should not be surprising, given the fact that the quality of that emotional connection depends on what kind of relationship the child will have only to himself and the people around him. Children recognize and experience this connection with their mother primarily through the emotions they have about her. For example, a child who falls and scratches his knee 
generally runs toward his mother, as if he knew that she would help him feel better. This is because the mother is the primary source of security, and the father is a knight in shining armor who fights for the family and protects her. However, if we look at the mother with a personality disorder, we can almost certainly state that she had a traumatic childhood. Personality disorders originate from unstable family environments, with frequent losses and multiple parental substitutions with which deep and lasting relationships were not possible. Many of them were born as unwanted children and were never fully accepted. Others had parents who were ambivalent and hostile, who were lied to, physically beaten, or sexually abused. The role of trauma suffered in early childhood, as noted by some authors, is considered to be a key factor in the development of borderline personality disorder in future mothers. 1-1. So, what is so particular in understanding the mother with a borderline personality disorder? We have to analyze two questions. First, the role of the mother in the family and the child's life, and second, what is the core of borderline personality disorder? The role of a mother is crucial for the child. Many childhood scholars, especially psychoanalytic orientations, emphasize the importance of the mother in the development and upbringing of the child. First, there is an unbreakable biological bond between mother and child that grows into a deep emotional relationship. So that's the main problem for you. The biological bond is created by nature, and you're unable to resist that bond. The love for a mother is a special kind. When someone like that rejects you, that can leave severe consequences, but we're hoping that you will learn how to cope with them and help yourself and your mother. Studies have shown that various anxiety states of the child, which can manifest even into adulthood, have a prenatal origin. More specifically, they're associated with the secretion of the maternal stress cortisol hormone. One aspect of the protective function of the mother is physical. That is, the child must be bathed, nourished, fed. Another form of protection is psychological, which is reflected in the child's safety when they are together. This form of protection is of great importance for the mental health of the child, as it is precisely the first emotions that are exchanged with the mother. Breastfeeding is not only about satisfying the urge to starve, but also about creating effective attachment. Attachment, as author and researcher Bowlby calls it, has proven to influence even the child's future partnerships. The baby cries. The mother takes the baby in her arms, gently rocks her, and saying, I'll kiss my gold and everything will go through. The baby calms down from his mom's kiss and smiles. We know this situation. Every mother has experienced it several times. A close relationship with the mother is the main driving force behind the baby's development in the womb and during the first six months after birth. Scientific research has confirmed that the unborn baby responds to the mother's mood and emotions. When the mother is upset, her fetus is upset as well. When the mother experiences short-term shock, the fetus remains cramped and disturbed for hours afterward. During all nine months of pregnancy, the baby is in inseparable physical and physiological contact with the mother. This cannot change abruptly after birth. When the baby comes into the world, she is not yet in the environment, but she perceives light, hears voices, and feels pleasure from his mother's touch. That's why the physical closeness of the skin to the skin in the first hours after birth is so important. It remains important for many months to come. Mother's love is a fundamental physiological need that ensures development as is food. Regarding the other question, the answer is very difficult. Arietti calls the borderline personalities tornado personalities. She says that they often live in an atmosphere of disaster and doom, chronically dissatisfied, disappointed, with a constant sense of deprivation. But, at the same time, they show resilience, a sense of humor, and phoenix phenomena, persistent getting up after frequent falls. 
They complain about alienation from people. They're desperate for the meaninglessness of living. It's easy to recognize them by the leitmotif of their verbalization, and there is a great inner void in me. To feel nothingness is to feel a significant, unexplained amount of something we have no say in, something dead in us, something that has died and left its bad aspects in our interior, or something that never even came to life to make us feel alive inside. Therefore, you cannot look at a mother with this condition only as of the offender. In some subject matter, she is a victim too. As we said, the victim is because she is not incapable of loving. On the contrary, she suffers. She suffers terribly, and later, she tries to replace everything with the child. So you may have experienced another trauma. Mothers bond with children, and there is no exception. She would later try to keep the child, not to let him grow up because she wants to be with her forever. Only the aggressive type of mother will cause the child to develop anger in the child. But you need to know that these cases are common, and you are not alone. This consequence has affected many people, and in this story they're all victims. If you are a survivor of this trauma, be strong. Encourage yourself to seek professional help and overcome the problems that have arisen because you will be capable to see the world with the right eyes and realize that you are no less important than others. Your view will open up, but you must know that nothing was your fault, not even your mother's. If you understand and forgive, you've already taken the steps toward healing. Only great people are forgiving, and you must be aware that no one wanted this to happen. Not you, of course, but neither is your mother.